local breaking news. This is WYFF News 4 at 6 in high definition. And we're going to begin tonight with a look at John's radar. Yes, there are some storms out there and there are some warnings to go with them. Chief Meteorologist John Sessrich is on the road live tonight in Greenville. And John, oh. where is he? Voila. Oh, Bang. Look at there that. There he is. Oh. Luck. Pure luck. Hey. Oh, hey. <laughs> Hello. Hey, John. We Hello, see are, am I here now for good? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> How you doing, Gabrielle and Michael? Uh, good evening. Uh, you know, we're talking about a few of the thunderstorms could be severe. We've had a few severe thunderstorm warnings out for parts of Henderson and Buncombe County. We also have a nasty thunderstorm heading for you folks in Hickory right now. That's the only severe thunderstorm warning that we have right now. Take a look at live Super Doppler 4 HD. This is just ahead of a cold front, pretty strong cold front for this time of the year that's pushing in from the northwest. And there are the thunderstorms. You can see the yellow boxes. Those are all severe thunderstorm warnings. And that's the best chance for looking at severe weather. In fact, the Storms Prediction Center had us down for a slight risk of severe weather really in the uh, Piedmont of North Carolina, pretty much where those thunderstorms are firing up. And that'll be heading off to the east, southeast. And thunderstorms pretty strong around the Charlotte area. Things are fairly quiet in the upstate northeastern Georgia. That is certainly good news. Because uh, once the front goes by, then we'll have no threat of showers or thunderstorms. But the front's still kind of in the mountains. So as long as it's close by, we still have a chance of a pop-up strong to severe thunderstorm producing damage and winds and large hail. But right now, no warnings in the local area or watches. So we'll keep you updated throughout the newscast. Now back to you, Gabrielle. We'll see you in a little bit. Thank you, John. A Spartanburg County High School could get renovations costing $71 million. That's if voters support the project. WIFF News 4's Mike McCormick is live and local tonight in School District 5. So, Mike, when does the vote happen? Well, Gabby, it would happen on September 9th. The school here was actually built in 1955, and making it better would require a tax hike. Those renovations would happen in four phases lasting through 2019. And some of the improvements include making classrooms bigger and adding natural light, rerouting buses so students wouldn't have to cross their path while getting to and from class, adding air conditioning to the old gym where PE classes are held, and upgrading the stadium. The renovations would also make room for 500 additional students. The cost comes with a tax increase, about $53.60 for a home worth $100,000. And that is where the opinions start to differ. Education is the foundation of their future. It's how they're going to live the rest of their lives. Um, they, have to they have to have that. So it's, um, it's okay with me. The school needs it. Our kids need it. My kids need it. I understand that they need the, t the school to be bigger and the renovations probably need to be, um, you know, done. But the thing of it is, you know, is the taxes right now are, are really high the way it is. District 5 officials tell us the renovations are actually the cheapest way to go. They say demolishing the school here and building another one would actually double that $71 million price tag. Mike McCormick, WIFF News 4, live tonight in Duncan. All right, Mike, thank you. Across the country this election year, there's a lot at stake in those U.S. Senate races. Both of South Carolina's U.S. Senators will be on the ballot in November. So we wanted to know your thoughts on how they're doing. With more results from our Palmetto Politics poll tonight, here's WIFF News 4's Nigel Robertson. We're going to take a look at the U.S. Senate races in this Palmetto Politics poll. We wanted to take a look at both of our South Carolina senators and how voters say they are feeling about their chances. First up, Senator Tim Scott. We polled 1,000 people. Our question, do you approve or disapprove of the job Tim Scott is doing as United States Senator? A total of 48% of people approve of the job he's doing. 27% disapprove. 25% are undecided. And just a few people, 1%. Refuse to answer the question. Now, let's take a look at Senator Lindsey Graham. Same question. Do you approve or disapprove of the job Lindsey Graham is doing as United States Senator? Take a look. 44% of voters disapprove of the job Senator Graham is doing. 39% approve. 17% are undecided. And no one refused to answer. But that said, the voters may not be very happy with Senator Graham, but they seem to still support him by a big margin, even now that Thomas Ravenel is in the race. We asked if the general election for United States Senate were held today, and the candidates were Lindsey Graham, the Republican candidate, Brad Hutto, the Democratic candidate, Victor Coer, the Libertarian Party candidate, Thomas Ravenel, the Independent Party candidate, which of these, I just read, would you vote for? 45% say they would elect Lindsey Graham. 
33%, say Brad Hutto. Thomas Ravenel comes in at 10%. Victor Coer at 4%. And 8% are undecided. We asked James Lee with the Susquehanna Polling and Research, who conducted the poll for us, what this means. Lindsey Graham continues to hold a sizable margin of over his Democrat opponent. And despite some of the questions that some Repo Republican voters have of Lindsey Graham's vote record, they're still with him in the general election. The margin of error for our poll usually ranges 3 to 4%. That is a 95% confidence level. All right, Nigel, thank you. Tomorrow, more from the poll results on legalizing online gambling and medical marijuana. More of your answers at 6 o'clock tomorrow night, only here on WYFF News 4. A little sports talk for you now. Sports director Brad Freilich is in Blythewood at a media golfing event. He talked with USC head football coach Steve Spurrier about the buzz of being picked to be number one. Last week at SEC Media Days, the Gamecocks were chosen by the media to win the SEC East. But Steve Spurrier said today, with the media's track record of picking champions, he would rather the Gamecocks not have been picked. Well, unfortunately, uh, the media picks are usually wrong. Uh, all of you know that, especially the champion. I think they've only picked the champion four out of 22 years, I heard. Uh, I don't know about the divisions. And in fact, some media guy said, I'm going to pick you guys to win. I said, oh, please don't, please don't. Pick, pick Georgia, pick Georgia. Uh, but he picked us anyway. Well, the Gamecocks chosen to win the SEC East after losing some of the best players in program history in Jadavion Clowney and Connor Shaw. In Blythewood, Brad Freilich, WYFF News 4.